Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, let's talk about the problem rotting oranges. I'm going to talk about BFS approach, but before diving into the code, let's quickly talk about how to think about this problem. How do we even reach to this point of BFS? Let's look at the problem setup and things should become more clear. Let's say that these two red pieces are rotten oranges. All of the yellow pieces are good oranges. I don't know why oranges are yellow, but let's go with it. Now, what will happen in the next iteration? The rotten orange will go in all the four directions and spoil all of those good oranges. So this particular rotten orange, this particular rotten orange will go to this orange, poison it, spoil it. Similarly for this one. Again, we have two rotten oranges to start off with. So we'll have to also take care of this one as well. Okay, so this is what happens in the next iteration. Pretty simple, right? Uh, what would happen in the next iteration? Can you take a guess? This orange will now go ahead and poison the next one. Similarly, this one will poison this one. This one will poison the top one. And this is what we see. One quick thing to note is that initially, both of these oranges were not poisoned. So you would imagine that both of these in the middle would also never be poisoned. But this sort of effect flowed to it. Like these are the rotten oranges exploring in all the four directions and they make everything they touch rotten. So in the next iteration, they expanded their circular radius by one. Again, in the next iteration, they will expand the radius by one. Again, and then again. This is the intuition behind using BFS. Because you have one node, you have one node you start off with and you explore in all the four directions. All of those nodes that you've explored can now also be taken as root nodes or starting nodes to explore further. In this way, your radius of the circle of your exploration goes on increasing. This is the intuition behind BFS. Let's actually go ahead and start coding this up. Let's get started with the code. What's the objective here? Well, from any point of time, I want to keep a track of all of the rotten oranges. So from this particular point, which is the initial point of time, I want to explore in all the four directions. This is what happens in the later one. But in this particular iteration, do we care about these two rotten oranges? These two we've already considered before, so we don't need to consider them again. In fact, if you imagine, when we're doing this BFS, the only rotten oranges of concern are the ones lying on the circumference of the circle of exploration. These are the rotten oranges sitting at the boundary, which are going to help increase the boundary even more. Okay, this means that we want to keep a track of rotten oranges. And uh, let's go ahead and create a set which will keep a track of all of the rotten oranges. But these are not just any rotten oranges. These are the oranges at the circumference of the circle of exploration. Okay, great. Now what do I do? Well, I want to say that, you know what? While there are uh, rotten oranges to explore, while you can go ahead and keep on increasing the circle of exploration, go ahead and do that. So while rotten exists, we'll do some computation. Okay, what do we do? For every single orange uh, sitting on the circumference, let's get its x, y. Uh, so we'll have uh, so we'll have a x, y, and rotten for each and every single rotten orange. We have the x, y positions which is its coordinate and for each of these oranges i'm going to explore in all the four directions for each of these oranges so let's go ahead and iterate over that so for dx dy and uh, this is just exploring in all the four directions we can now say new x equals to old x plus dx similarly new y equals to old y plus dy now we can check hey is this nx and ny in range or not Right? We don't want to go explore out of the boundary. Like once this point is reached, once this point is reached, I don't want to go beyond the boundaries. That is not legal. So we'll go ahead and check that. So this should be lesser than equals to this NX, which is lesser than some R, which is specifying the number of rows. And similarly for this, which is going to be specified by the number of columns. And we're going to say if both of these conditions are true, if you can indeed explore in that direction, what do we do? was the key point to note here. These red points, these red rotten oranges cannot poison just any uh, any single grid element. 
it can only poison these yellow pieces. From this point, from this point, it cannot poison this old already poisoned one. It can't even touch the legal out of the boundary cases. Similarly for this particular orange, it cannot touch these white pieces. They're completely immune to this orange. The only thing it can ever disturb is the yellow piece. So we are going to check, you know what, uh, that should be inside of the grid, the new explored, the new explored uh, orange, the new orange that we want to also rot should be in the grid first of all. And secondly, it should be a good orange beforehand. So I want to say grid of X or grid of new X and new Y should be equals to the value of, uh, what is it? One representing a fresh orange. So we'll put it as one. So only if that particular element is one, only if you have a particular good orange that you can explore and rot it to, then you can do this. Okay. Uh, what do we do at this point? At this point, this particular rotten orange, at this particular NX and Y, which is the new grid position, this particular orange becomes rotten. What was initially one now becomes two, right? One becomes two. We'll also say that, uh, you know what, m dot add and x and y. Basically, this orange can be our, uh, basically this. Uh, let me also put temp as a set over here. Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm saying that, you know what, for all of the rotten orange, uh, oranges inside of this, uh, on the circumference of the circle, go ahead and explore all of them. But don't just put them in the rotten because that is what we're iterating over, right? In the X, Y thing. So I'm going to add it to this new temporary array, new temporary set, which I'm going to uh, replace at the end. So first we'll explore one particular circumference and then the next particular circumference and then on and on. And on. So these are concentric circles, basically. Okay, there's too much math in this question. Okay, fine. So we're done with this. Okay, let's also get this RNC which is going to be the length of uh, rows, which is, sorry, which is this, the number of rows. So it's length of grid, length of grid of zero. Uh, what else do we need? So we have R and C. We also need to uh, get started with the rotten with something, right? We have to insert elements into this initial set. So let's go ahead and iterate over all the elements. Range of R, so for J in range of C basically iterating over all the rows in all the columns. If the grid of uh, ij, I should have put xy, never mind. If the grid of ij is equals to equals to two, if the current orange is a rotten orange in the initial state, then go ahead and add this to the rotten set. So I'll put i and j inside. Uh, at the very end, what do we do? I want to return some count. Right. The whole point of this question is to return the minimum number of minutes that elapsed until no cell has a fresh orange. All of the oranges are rotten. Okay. So we'll also set this count equals to zero over here. And uh, for every iteration we do, for every circle we sort of explore, and each time we increase our radius, we're going to increase the count by one because a minute has elapsed. Take for example, this particular case, say this is at some point of time. In the next point of time, what would happen? As we discussed, this would get poisoned, this would get poisoned and this would get poisoned. So the circle, the radius expanded a bit. And this is what we saw. Cool. Pretty simple up till now. Okay, cool. So before we submit this, I want to show a quick error for this code. If you run this, you will get an answer, which is five, but the expected is four. In fact, for any particular sample case, which is valid, uh, you will see an answer greater than one, one plus whatever the original answer is. So you can do count minus one over here. And uh, yeah, that is very sneaky, but hey, you know, whatever works. But this will sort of fail in this particular test case. Let's say the only element we have is zero. So we are going to output minus one, although we have to output zero, right? Count minus one. So zero minus one becomes minus one just have to put this as a max of this count minus one and zero. So basically, if it's a positive value, go ahead and reduce by one. Otherwise, just output zero. Cool. So we're done, right? Uh, let's go ahead and let me show you 
some error that can happen. Okay, so if you see, we have one test case that goes wrong, this particular test case. Okay, so let's look at this particular test case. What do you see here? From this particular cell, you can explore in both the directions. So top and bottom get poisoned. And then these will spread onto all of these cells. And in the further iterations, it will sort of rot all of this area. However, however, there's a boundary between these two cells. These two cells are completely safe from being rotten. In this way, both of them don't really get rotten at all. And one of the questions, one of the constraints of this question is that return the minimum number of minutes that must elapse until no cell, until no cell has a fresh orange. But in this case, we do have fresh oranges at the end, right? This would poison the entire thing, but these two are completely independent. So these two would never get poisoned. So we'll have to keep a track of how many number of these uh, oranges have we poisoned up till now, right? And so at the end, we can check, you know, if uh, the number of poisoned oranges is the same as the number of total oranges uh, in the grid, right? We can do something of that sort. So let's go ahead and keep a track of all of the oranges that are fresh initially. So grid of ij equals to equals to one. If that is the case that the current orange we're looking at is a fresh orange, then uh, let's have a fresh counter plus equals to one. So we'll set fresh equals to zero. And now we'll also edit this part and we'll say that every time a fresh orange becomes rotten, we can reduce this count. Right? So we started off with fresh zero, but then we included all of the oranges that were fresh in the first iteration. So at that point of time, in the very first iteration, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? We have eight fresh oranges to begin with. Now, what would happen in the last iteration? In the last iteration, one, two, three, four, five, six, six more fresh oranges will get converted to rotten oranges. That is this minus one thing will equal to happen. We started off with eight, but now six got rot. Okay. So this means that fresh will be equals to two at the end. And we want to somehow account that, you know what, if fresh equals to equals to zero, if you've considered everything, then do what we did before. Else you haven't really poisoned every single orange, which means that there are some oranges still remaining. And in that case, we'll return minus one. Okay, uh, cool, this works. Let's go ahead and submit this. Cool, we get accepted with the runtime 48 milliseconds, better than 90% of the people. Don't worry too much about the runtimes. Uh, I just submitted the pretty much the same code before and uh, yeah, lead code is not really consistent this way. Anyways, this is it for the solution to the problem, rotting oranges.